welcome to my channel. I'm very excited for doing this video and sharing with you everything I've learned since I'm in Sri Lanka. It's been three months so far. It's, it's been amazing. I've seen so many beautiful places, met amazing people from really all the world. My time here is unfortunately coming to an end. I'm currently planning my trip to India, but I thought about doing this video to hopefully make your trip here easier. And if you haven't considered yet to come to Sri Lanka, I want to invite you to really try to think about it because it's such a beautiful place and island to be for a while really it's so special being here so really consider it uh, but let's start with what i think you really should know when you first plan your trip to sri lanka first of all you do need a visa to come to this country so it's really easy to apply i applied for my visa at the beginning of december 2022 and i arrived on january 6th and I get approved after only 20 minutes and I only pay for 180 days visa around 60 euros. So don't forget to get health insurance and let your doctors know what are your travel plans and if you have all the recommended vaccines uh, because if you're also planning to travel to other places like Thailand there are some vaccines that are mandatory like the yellow fever but let's get to the important stuff definitely check the season when you're planning to come to Sri Lanka to make sure you're starting in a great place and enjoying the island and having a good start uh, of this experience. Once you're up at the airport, there will be two companies offering data packages and SIM cards, uh, Mobitel and Dialog. I've been personally using Dialog because it seems to be like the most popular one and I really recommend it to you even though I never tried Mobitel. Uh, so I can't really compare them, but I also never had any problems in these three months with Dialog. And I, every 15 gigabyte, I pay around um, three euros. It's about one uh, 1,000 uh, uh, rupees. Uh, a little bit less than three euro but uh, that's like really affordable and i never had any problem another thing to do once you arrive at the airport is to get some cash because cash is king in this country credit cards and debit cards are hardly accepted even at the most tourist towns uh, of sri lanka it's it's just cash it's really just about having cash here and there's tons of atms so don't worry you will find atms but definitely you need to avoid to pay fee and i just go to the google maps which is such a good tool for everything and i just write the city that i'm at atms no fee and i always give them options i never had problem finding some cash in this country the card i always use when i'm traveling it's called revolut it's compared to the other card that i also have with me while I'm traveling because i also like to have additional cards i pay nothing when i'm withdrawing money or i only pay a small amount of fee and also transferring money it's super fun i could never afford to pay every month 20 euro on the commissions because I'm withdrawing money. Getting around Sri Lanka, here the, probably the most fun part of this video. You are either going to love the traffic here or either going to hate it. <laughs> Let's start with the buses. The buses drive everywhere, everywhere. They have such a vibe. I always loved it, but only for short rides. Like really, I could never be in a Sri Lanka bus for couple for more than an hour because they are so loud not all of them but the music is so loud and at first it's nice it's fun but then it's like imagine yourself being in a bus for like five hours trip it's just like oh my god i cannot do that they get also so crowded sometimes not always depends where you are what time is it but if it's weekend or not but sometimes they get really crowded and also here the traffic it's so loud because they honk all the time because they want you to know that they are there so imagine all the cars, the traffic and everyone just honk honk because I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. It's just very loud, which is fun at first, but it's also very loud, you know? And they told me in India it's worse. So I'm a little bit scared on that side, you know? Because already here, sometimes my head goes like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> but it's nothing too bad. Train system, it's really solid and it's also very affordable. It's not like the bus, but it's still very cheap. 
and it also has like such a great views depends where you're going but i highly recommend you to book your ticket in advance for example for the ride candy to ella which is the most famous train ride in sri lanka that i have not done because i did not book in advance i was like oh, yeah i'm just gonna walk in there but no but i still experienced the train here it's so nice uh depends where you are going you are going to experience really beautiful scenery and really beautiful views that i highly highly recommend you to take the train once you are here at least once just to experience the Sri Lanka trains because they are a vibe also get very crowded um, but it's still nice sometimes it's hard to get a seat but you know it's part of the experience you gotta go for it you gotta go for it another super fun way that I was really looking forward for it is hopping on a tuk-tuk as I arrived to Sri Lanka uh, they are a little bit more expensive so I always use them only for like short rides or like late at night if I'm out with some friends and I have to get back to my accommodation because there's no buses that's the only pretty much transportation you have unless you're driving a scooter with I don't because I am scared I'm very scared of driving here all right I admit it I admit it I... and definitely don't get in a tuk-tuk until we have agreed on a price in Sri Lanka the tuk-tuks don't the majority of them don't have the meter so it's really important that before you arrive to your destination you already know how much you're going to pay him or her most of likely it's him I never saw a woman driving a tuk-tuk but I think there are I just never met them so it could be a her as well uh, that even matters <laughs> uh, it's really not that common but it still happens that sometimes you jump in a tuk-tuk I done it at the beginning and I will ask at the end what is the price and they will try to charge me three times what I should pay so that is just not okay so try to avoid that by just asking and making sure you both agree on a price renting a scooter in Sri Lanka is probably one of the best way to move around it's really affordable it's around 2,000 rupees per day and the fuel it's around 1,500 and you're able to be so independent I really wish I wasn't scared of driving a scooter here but I also don't think it's a good uh, place for me to start driving a scooter since I never drove a scooter my whole life <laughs> so I'm just gonna wait but I definitely recommend you if you feel very comfortable with driving a scooter to just go for it another thing to keep in mind when you come to Sri Lanka is that everything here is slow just prepare everything to be slow at first I was like wow this is nice everyone is living in the present everyone is just like no plans I like this lifestyle you know it's like how I want to be and you know I love it and until I go to restaurants and I'm so hungry and I'm like wow this is, has been an hour they take forever but at least when you're waiting for your food the food is amazing really like they take so long I have to admit because they cook everything from scratch most of the places they are really caring about you having good food and treating you so well and welcoming when you arrive to their restaurant or some people have like small restaurants outside their house and it's just like such a family vibe especially if you're traveling alone it's amazing uh, there's a lot of food that you can try here I will write you everything let's talk about accommodations which is such a big topic because it all depends really what kind of traveler are you what is your lifestyle and what is your budget if you're looking for a social atmosphere then I definitely recommend you to stay in hostel but if you're still on a budget and you don't really feel like the social atmosphere then definitely recommend you the guest house I also like staying at guest house because I feel like I'm helping small businesses because most of the guest houses are owned by families that have like a little part of their house like a room or a small apartment where um, they rent it out and I feel like I mean I'm helping like a small business not like big chain big hotels and I think it's such a good way uh, to save money but also help um, locals another big tip is to uh, try if you're planning on staying in the area for a little bit longer then definitely try to do walk-in don't book everything through uh, all your accommodation through booking or hostels words which is the most two platforms I've been using in Sri Lanka uh, because the taxes are going to be high and also if you book for one week uh, through booking uh, or hostel word uh, there's a high risk that when you arrive there maybe you don't like the place you don't like the vibe you don't like the city there's a high chance that if you would like to leave earlier they're not going to give you any kind of refund if you are in a budget you can still treat yourself once in a while like i stayed in a really beautiful tree house and other super nice accommodations with uh, a little bit more upgrades which is air conditioning like warm water just stuff that you don't get if you go on a low uh on a on a really low budget but you go with the vibe it's just up to you and i think the accommodation 
it's such a big choice uh, to make your trip uh, enjoyable and fun because if you are staying in not a nice place you don't feel comfortable you don't feel safe you're not going in to enjoy your trip uh, so if you feel like you want to be social you want to be uh, in contact with people all the time you want to be doing things with people I highly recommend you the hostels because it's such a good place to be especially in a fun place like the south during the season there's like so many activities um, that the hostels plan and uh, so many places that you can go to and I really have my heart for Yo-Yo Surf Hostel which is in Ahangama it's located in the south and it's such a nice hostel with such a nice atmosphere it's like as I arrived there I've been treated like family and there's so many people that I met there from all over the world and I'm still in contact with them and it's just so nice uh, making good connections while you're traveling and sharing your experience and your stories with other people and I think when you are in a, in a guest house you don't have that social life but also you also sometimes need it like me right now I've been staying in the last um, month on a guest house and I really been enjoying it and maybe I'm ready later in India or somewhere else to go again in hostels but I also need a break from hostels that is how I like to travel I kind of try to incorporate the social life but also like the chill life private life a little bit uh, to recharge and get ready again to socialize again because it's also you need a break from that here we go is the time to end this super long video with so many informations that i hope they were really helpful for you to plan your trip to sri lanka and i really hope you have the best time here because this country has so much to see and so much to offer that it's impossible to come here and not liking it i really didn't meet anyone here that it was like oh yeah sri lanka sucks i'm leaving like no this place is amazing you're going to have the best time here just plan it plan it accordingly and you will make your experience special and you will love this country so yeah thank you so much